So hey everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in to the room. Hi everybody, welcome to Daily Reflections with Chris. My name's Chris. And in this particular channel, we talk recovery. I will talk recovery today. <laughs> I want to apologize. I, I mean, I don't know if I need to apologize, but yesterday's entry was a little too, even for me, was like, whoa, Chris, what are you doing? Um, I thought about it all day. And the truth is, some days are going to be better than other days in, in sobriety. I mean, we're barely, for me especially, I'm just starting to learn how to do life again. Um, so sometimes I'm... I, I still don't know what's going on uh, most days, but I do know the solution. And the solution has, for me, has always been um, the tools or or readings, like the data reflections, something to reflect on. Um, yesterday, I had a lot of <clears throat> too much time, I think, on my hands. So today, um, you know, when I got home, I was like, you know, I, I need a, I need to get out of the funk. Sometimes it takes longer. Sometimes no matter what I do, it's still there. But I don't drink today and I don't drug. And that's what makes my life better today and easier and more. Um, even though yesterday I was kind of a mess, today I, was, I woke up and I was better. So so it was it was good. It was good. And we just have days like that. And yesterday was my day, one of my days. Um, so anyway, today we're going to talk recovery, okay? I said I was not going to talk about that, but I did. Uh, so let's talk recovery. Today is March 21st. And today's entry is called Material and Spiritual Well-Being. So yesterday we talked about love and tolerance. That's more of the emotional part of it. And today we're talking about material and spiritual well-being. Fear of economic insecurity will leave us. That's from Alcoholics Anonymous, page 84. Having fear reduced or eliminated and having economic circumstances improve are two different things. When I was new in AA, I had those two ideas confused. I thought that fear would leave me only when I started making money. However, another line from the big book jumped off the page one day when I was chewing up my financial difficulties. For us, material well-being always followed spiritual progress. It never proceeded. And that's from page 127 of the big book. I suddenly understood that this promise was a guarantee. I saw that it put priorities in the correct order, that spiritual progress would diminish that terrible fear of being destitute, just as it diminished many other fears. Today, I try to use the talents God give me to benefit others. I found that it is what others valued all along. I try to remember that I no longer work for myself. I only get the use of the wealth God created. I never have owned it. My life's purpose is much clearer when I just work to help, not to possess my God. Jeez. That's, oh my God, in a nutshell, sorry. My hair, let me put my hat back around. It's on my bald head. I'm old. Anyway, in a nutshell, that's pretty much what, we, what I've been talking about like for the last two weeks, right? And what I'm learning is that, excuse me. Sorry, we got a cat too, so my dogs are going crazy. So, okay, so that's what I've, uh, you know, we've kind of been talking, I've been talking about these last two weeks and how, uh, y'all have seen like me go through like this really, really dark spot to like a, a gray spot to like a really, uh, a much lighter spot today, right? So, when I first started here, they said, trust the process. Well, first, when I get here, I wouldn't trust anything. And for me, a process is like, that takes too long, right? Like, I want it now. I want satisfaction right now. I want to feel better now. I want to not have this fear of financial insecurity, like, right now. And it's talking about that. It's like, okay, so I thought when I started making big money, which I did, that I was not going to worry about my finances anymore, right? No, not right. So not true. Because I was still worried. I was still worried about my finances, right? So what is the solution? Well, for me, for us, material well-being always followed spiritual progress. It never proceeded. In other words, first, I must work on the spiritual aspect of 
my um, of of me and my program of my life. I mean, and then all the other stuff is is a result of that. If I work on my on my spiritual progress, my prayer, my meditation, who am I working for now? Right? Am I working for me? Am I working for God? Am I working because I'm his? I'm his employer. I'm working just to possess, just to get stuff, just to have things. And do I want to have things? Yeah, I want to have things. Like, I just... I looked at a piece of land today that I really, really want to buy. Why? Because I want to have that. But I want to have it because it's an investment to me. To me, it's an investment. Today it costs this. Tomorrow it costs a little bit more. And, and years to come, it'll, it'll cost a little bit more. Is it going to fluctuate? Maybe. But for the most part, it's going to go up. Plus... It's going to be a home that, that, that I could own and that I could, even if I have to pay the same price that I pay here in rent, it's something that I'm going to own, right? But when I own it, does that mean that I'm going to stop worrying about stuff? No, it just means that I'm going to have my own property. Will I, be, will I have a sense of satisfaction? Yeah. So long as I keep things in order, keep saying, thank you, God, for my new home. I, I don't know how anyone, you know, thanks Things get time for me sometimes. I'm like, geez, I just can't, I can't, you know, I start worrying, how am I going to pay rent? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? And, and I just, and I, I have to be reminded, Chris, boom, cut it out. Put it in order. What is the order? Okay, God, well, I've been here before. I don't know how you did it that last time, but you did it. And I don't know how you're going to do this time, but I know you're going to do it. I trust. I get, I, my guarantee, my promise is that if I keep doing the right, the next right thing, and I keep staying in your will, and I keep, uh, you know, not being ratchet, and I, if I don't steal, and if I get honest, all these things that 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 the big, you know, that all these books tell me that needs to be in some kind of order, that I'm gonna, that everything else you're taking care of, and everything's already working out. That is your promise. This big book of Alcoholics Anonymous has promises. It does, just like the other big book, the B-I-B-L-E, right? It has promises. It promises me many, many things. Well, so does the big book. But the big book, even the steps are in order, right? First, I have to do step one, get honest. Then I do step two, come willing. Step three, make a decision. Four, let's go. Let's start writing. Let's start taking inventory. Five, let's talk to somebody else about it. Six, become willing to have those defects of character removed. Seven, ask to be have those defects of character removed. Eight, made a list of all persons that I had harmed, right? Every single one of them, even, even if they never harmed me. I gotta, if, maybe there's no resentment attached to it, but I gotta make that list. And nine, start making the amends. Start doing the next right thing. Start making things right. Start cleaning my side of the street, right? Because I haven't done that so far up until I get to nine. Is I'm starting cleaning my side. Matt, I messed up. I'm sorry. Not that, not that shallow, but you know, something more deeper than that. And the promises are in this step. Step nine. It says, Before we are halfway through, before we are halfway through with all the amends, with cleaning our side of the street, maybe we're just halfway down the block, we're cleaning it, we're sweeping it or whatever, mopping it, spraying it down, whatever you want to, whatever, however you want to look at it. By the time I'm halfway through with that, I'm going to, I'm going to, these promises are going to come true. That I'm going to have to know, I'm going to know a freedom and a happiness and a peace and Things that I didn't know how to handle them, I'm going to start to handle them, right? And even this fear of econo in, in economic insecurity will leave us. In other words, I'm busy doing God's work. I'm busy making things right. I'm busy working on Chris that I don't have time to be worried about if my bills are going to get paid and all this. Man, I show up to work. I do a good job. And on Friday, I get that paycheck and I pay my, I get to pay my bills today. I get to treat myself today. I get to buy a car today. I get to pay insurance today. I get to register it. I get I get to do these things. It's a whole it's a whole attitude. You know what? I'm gonna read all the promises I think. Okay, bear with me. I'll be right back. I'm gonna get my book.
I got my book. And this is on page. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? Okay, so this is uh, step nine in the big, the big book. This big, this AA big book right here. Isn't this cool? I went to, a, I, I did a, a big book study once with the, with the, these ladies at this, uh, this group and, uh, and somebody paid to have these uh, done like that. And it's only half of it. Now everybody does it, but this was a, this was before it became cool. <laughs> so it's all written on. So anyway, let's talk about this. Nine step promises, right? Well, Chris, we're talking about step three. I know we're talking about step nine too. Okay. So here we go. Step nine. It says, if we are painstaking about this phase of our development, in other words, if we're just, we're going, man, we're just being fearless about it. Even if it hurts, we're going to do it. Even if we're scared, we're going to do it. Even when we don't think we're going to do it, we're going to, we're okay. We might not do it that then, but we need, as soon as we become willing to do it, we got to do it. Right. Step nine is very, um, step eight too, man, I can't wait to start talking about step eight, but right now we're, we're just, just go with the flow, okay? So then, anyway, so it says if we're painstaking, I'm just like, no matter what, we're going to do this, right? We're not going to numb our feelings with no drugs or no women or no alcohol or blah, 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 anything that makes us feel different. Maybe a little bit of candy, that, that always helps us, right? And food. It says if we are painstaking about this phase of, of our development, right? We will be amazed before we are halfway through. We are going to know a new freedom and a new happiness. We will not regret the past, nor wish to shut the door on it. We will comprehend the word serenity and we will know peace. No matter how far down the scale we have gone, we will see how our experience can benefit others. That feeling, that feeling of uselessness and self-pity will disappear. We will lose interest in selfish things and gain interest in our fellows. Self-seeking will slip away. Our whole attitude and outlook upon life will change. Fear of people and of economic insecurity will leave us. We will intuitively know how to handle situations which used to baffle us. We will suddenly realize that God is doing for us what we could not do for ourselves. <clears throat> are these extravagant promises? We think not. They are being fulfilled among us. Sometimes quickly, sometimes slowly. They will always materialize if we work for them. <sighs> this book, it gives us promises. And it says, are these extravagant promises? Man, half the room says, man, yeah, it seems like I'm like, how, like, oh, man, I don't, I don't, I don't, can't see that. And for the people who are experienced, I'd be like, no, man, that is like, that is, that's on point. That it, that what they're saying is exactly what happened. What's happening. It doesn't mean that I'm going to have um, times where I have met less money than more money. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to have to have um, these these hard conversations with people around me. It just says the fear of having them, the fear of not having enough money, all that stuff is going to leave me. It doesn't say it might or maybe. It says it will if I work for them, right? Well, what's the work? Well, I got to do the steps, man. I got to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I got to continue the path. I have to stay on the path. I have to trust the process. I have to do the process. I have to do the, I have to let the cake bake. I have to let the turkey roast. I cannot take it out before time. Either way, you know, I cannot expect anything before time. Well, am I going to get some? Yes, I am. I, some of us have already been doing this, have, have already been feeling this at step three. But really, it's a step nine where they're absolutely promised. Right? So all these things... Um, You know, one of my favorites is we will suddenly realize that God is doing for us what we could not do for ourselves. 
there's some stuff happening in my life right now, you know, stuff that I've been reflecting on. It's not even, it's not, I mean, it's about, it's always about relationships. This whole thing, I mean, we're, we're, we're put on this earth to, to be in relationship with other people. Maybe not lovers. No, that doesn't mean that. I mean, like friends, co-workers, uh, maybe you're the boss, maybe you're the, maybe you're the, maybe you're the, you're the Indian. I mean, it, it, just to be in some type of relationship uh, with other people. And some are really bad and some of them are really good, right? Um. I lost my thread. I lost my train of thought again. I was talking about uh, God doing for me what I can do for myself, right? There's stuff that happens in my life that I have, I, I don't agree with. Like, I'm just like not okay with it. And I want to say something and I want to do something. And most of the time I don't, but sometimes I do. But even when I do, I realize in retrospect always that God... He's watching out for me, man. Whether I like it or not, he's taking care of me. Whether I like it or not, he loves me so much that people got to exit my life. Whether I like it or not, he He shows me things that I don't want to see. And whether I like it or not, he's protecting me even when I don't think he is. You know, this, this spiritual progress, this putting the, the cart before the horse, you know, everything that I that I think that I want first to feel the peace, to feel the joy, like relationships, like money, like, like jobs, like all that stuff, like having either, just, just things that I think that I need to give me all that. I don't, it doesn't always give me that. Sometimes it brings me more trouble. Sometimes it brings me more confusion. Sometimes it compromises my own progress, right? But when I put the spiritual part of it first, when I pray, when I meditate, ask God, okay, here I am. You know, I'm, obviously this is your will, or, or, or it wouldn't be here. So what can I do? I want to work with you. I want to work with this situation. He says, okay, well, this is your assignment for this week. I need you to go and do that. Okay, then I'm going to show up on time, leave when I'm supposed to, and do. And in, and in between those eight hours or nine hours or ten hours or whatever it is, I'm going to do the best freaking job that I possibly can. It might not always be 100. It might be 60%, but, I'm, but to me it's 100% for that day because it's all that I have. So I'm going to give it all that I have, expecting nothing in return, just knowing that that's my assignment for today. Right, if he says, okay, this is what you have, work with it, okay, I'll do. And he'll be like, I'm not leaving, but I, I'm, I've got to take care of some other things, okay, but I'm watching you, I'm protecting you, I'm taking care of you, but I just got other things to take care of right now. And he's working stuff out for, for my good, for the good of all those around me, because there's, there's a lot of people involved here, right? When I talk, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, when I used to drink, I thought I never hurt people because I would go to my room and get drunk every night and fall asleep. And then, and then, I mean, it got really, really isolated. I, I really, really isolated in my last days of drinking, even though uh, there was other people involved. For it was very, it was very temporary, you know. It was only because I had to. Uh, but when I chose to, what. What my choice was to be was to live a very isolated life all by myself, drinking myself to sleep every night. So, <clears throat> but I thought I'm not hurting nobody, but I did. I stole, I stole a son from my mother. I stole, uh, you know, a brother from my sister. I stole an uncle from my nieces. I mean, I stole a grandchild from my from my grandparents and my aunts and my uncles. I stole their time that I could have spent with them, that I could have called them, that I could have hung out with them. I stole from them. I mean, I stole from myself too, mostly, but I stole from other people. I mean, for me to sit here and be like, I didn't hurt nobody, that's a lie. That's a straight up lie. Right? So now that I'm in recovery, now that I'm in the real world trying to do this adult teen, right? Well, other people involved. So I, when I'm praying for me, I got to pray for them too. God help me. Not to slap somebody tonight. 
Those used to be my first prayers. God, help me not slap somebody today. Oh my God, just help me not slap it. Cause it was like so much stuff and I wasn't, it was on new to me. So now I get to pray, it's like, God, I want the best for everybody involved. I want the best for me, yeah, but I, now I want the best even for everybody involved, right? It says, uh, somewhere right here, it says that, I saw that it put priorities in the correct order. That spiritual progress would diminish that terrible fear of being destitute, right? Oof, just that as it diminished many other fears. I try to remember that I no longer work for myself. Today, I try to use the talents God gave me to benefit others. I found, I found that is what others valued all along. See, it tells me that so pity will disappear that I'm gonna lose, the promises tell me that I'm gonna lose uh, you know, I'm not going to think about selfish things anymore. I'm going to think about what am I putting, what am I adding to life now instead of taking from it? Like, what am I bringing to the table instead of just trying to figure out what am I going to go and get, you know, just kind of like this. And, and, and I've lived my life that, my life for that for a long ways, a long, a long time. So, so now that I'm eagerly wanting to do it different, You know, for me, it's important to read my literature, to pray, to meditate, to take the time to be mindful of others, to let God be God and I just be Chris, to show up and do a 100% job, even if I don't get an attaboy. I mean, that addiction to to um, to what other people think of, think of me, man, it's killing me. Golly, it's killing me so hard. I wish I wasn't so into that. I wish I didn't care what anybody thinks, but truth is I do. I do care what other people think. Because I love people and I want them to love me back. So it matters. But even if they don't, I know who I work for. And I work for the one who loves me no matter what. I mean, that's already, for me, that's more than more than ever today. It's just like, like Chris, I got you. And uh, I'm just gonna keep working on it, keep doing the best that I can, keep showing up, keep reading my book, keep hanging out with you guys. It's late over here in my world, but I don't care. I just really wanted to jump in and, and excuse myself for yesterday's video and talk recovery today, really talk about some serious recovery. And I came from uh, years and years of living a hopeless life and today, even, I don't have to, and even when I try to go there or when something takes me there, man, I, I have the tools that I need to to get me out of it. I have I have my conception of God works today. I have people in my life that encourage me not to feel sorry for myself or to say, you know, man, you don't need those people. No, no, no. They say, well, Chris, man, okay, just just be good to yourself. Just Take yourself to a nice dinner. Who cares if you don't have the money? Just take yourself to a nice dinner. Take yourself shopping. Buy buy yourself your favorite candy. Just do something. And then they when they're not when they get unbusy, then they're like, okay, now let's go hang out. You know, I have those kind of people in my life today, and I'm so grateful for that because um, that's the that's what I that's what I value today is like these strong relationships that that really persevered in all in all types of weather, you know, all types of weather. And I'm grateful for that. Um, but me, I got to do my part too, man. I got to I got to be the one too that people call on in and sometimes I am. I I'm like the newest the newest uh person in my group. Everybody else has been sober way longer and and a lot more smarter and wiser than me. But once in a while they'll call me even if it's just to uh, make the coffee or open the door or sweep the floor, they'll call me, right? But that's all right. That's my job right now. I'm cool. Am I always cool about it? No, because Chris always has stuff in his head, right? Um, but for the most part, I ideally, I would love to always be cool with it. 
ideally i would love to always be in a good mood ideally i would always love to be high on life ideally i would always love to be uh, without fear of all these things ideally i would love to to just be able to love people man like they ain't never be loved before ideally i would love to to be um to be a positive change in this world but the truth is it's not always like that for me not a hundred percent man I mean, if, if that was a case, I wouldn't need this program. If I was the, if that was a case, you wouldn't need me here. And I wouldn't need you if that was a case, right? If that was a case, I would have, I would have never been alcoholic. If that was a case, I mean, it, it, it's just, um, you know, words don't teach, life teaches. So as life goes on, then I will remember these words and experience them in a whole different way. And folks, if you're out there, maybe you're maybe you're not, maybe you're not on a struggle the bus. Maybe you're in like a really good place. I'm grateful. I'm grateful you're in a good place. I'm grateful when I'm in a good place. Whew, it feels good like nothing like nothing can bring us down, man. Ooh, no, no, no. Nobody can break our stride, right? Um, but if you're not, maybe you're struggling. Maybe you got too many worries. Maybe you. Maybe you don't have any friends. I don't I mean, I don't, I don't know. People go through a lot of different things, but just know that you're not alone. You're not. I know it feels like you, you, you I know it might feel like you are, but you're, you're not. There's so many people out, out there in this world. Um, Maybe, maybe you're not a prayer. Maybe you're not into this God thing. Maybe you're not even in recovery. Maybe you just, maybe you have a hobby. Go out and do that hobby with other people. There's this, there's this little shop over there and uh, close by. And like every Wednesday or Thursday, there's a bunch of them, they're just knitting. There's other people to knit, and they're not like all old or anything. There's young people and older people, so maybe like salsa dancing. I heard, yeah, I heard salsa classes are like the best way to meet a lot of people. So maybe go salsa dancing, right? Maybe you like books. Maybe you like poetry. Maybe you like running. Maybe you like hiking. Maybe you like skiing. Whatever your hobby is, go do it and do it with other people. Improve your life like that. I'm not saying don't do the God thing. I would never say that. But I'm saying if you're struggling with it and you're having a hard time and you maybe you're a skier and when you're up on that mountain, you're about to go down. I bet you like the ice and the clear skies and everybody else skiing with you. Isn't that beautiful? Might be God. He might be out there watching out for you. I think he is. I would, posi I would positively say it is. You know, I'm very grateful when I got here, they didn't tell me I had to believe anything. They just showed me how to pray. I have to be grateful. The gratitude list. That's a form of prayer. That's a form of saying, heck yeah. Boom, thank you for the ass, Lord. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, always a pleasure for me, always. Uh, health, it, it's like, this is like a healthy thing for me. And I hope to encourage some of you guys. And if I haven't today, well, tune in tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow I will, huh? So um, thank you so much for your time. I don't take your time lightly. I love you all so much. And I'll see you tomorrow.